welcome to Sleeping with Sarah. I'm in bed with Elise Golgowski. Yes, hi, hello. Yeah. How's it going? Good. How'd you sleep last night? Great. <laughs> yeah, you sleep great. I did. I, uh, I I didn't get to sleep till like two or so, but once I once I got to sleep, I was out like a light. Oh, so nice. it was nice. Yes. Yeah. So you go to bed really easily. Um, if I if I just hold still and don't make any movements and maybe take a hit of my vape, then I'll <laughs> <laughs> just a little, then I'll little, be little. out. All right, good night. Like, how long after the vape are you out? Is it like thirty seconds? Is it like five? Oh minutes? boy, I'm such a lightweight. I'll take one hit and I'll just start coughing, and then I'll just be like, like in a nice relaxed state. And then I have this pillow that has like an indent, so my head doesn't move. Oh. Yeah, to prevent wrinkles and shit. And so I just like... Wait, that, that's a thing to prevent... Wr- oh, like wrinkles on your face because Yeah, of yeah, that. from like sleeping and like if you have acne or something, like <sighs> acne problems with like oil or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it just, it's like training you like geisha style. It's like, training just, you to sleep and like I think yeah, that would yeah. make me I, I think I would feel anxiety like sleeping in a pillow that would like force you to stay in the same position. You know... For the longest time, I had it for over a year, and I I didn't think it was working because I could still, like, move my head. And then I found out that I was sleeping with it upside down. <laughs> and so then I turned it upright, and it just, like, it's, I don't know, it just, like, cradles your, your neck and your head. And so oh. it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't know, give it a try if you, if you, uh, I, I don't might. know. Uh, are you a cuddler? <laughs> I am a cuddler. Unfortunately, I'm single, so I just cuddle myself these days. <laughs> I have two cats, and they don't want to cuddle with me. Uh, Pierogi doesn't want to cuddle? No, Pierogi and Maverick, they're both boys, and they're both uh, gay, so they cuddle themselves in front of me. Oh, they like they're like, this is, this, is what a love, this is what a love relationship looks like. Yeah, yeah, they're mean gays. They, like, swirl <laughs> their Chardonnay and judge me before I leave the house. Like, you're really wearing that. Mm-hmm. You're so confident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want a, an animal that will not give you an, an unconditional love, but instead judge you at every moment, get a cat. <laughs> exactly. And they're free. If you find a cat on the street, you can just take it home. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to stop you. Just take it. Just take it. <laughs> get a bunch of people stealing cats after this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Get them off the street. <laughs> See, I had indoor outdoor cats growing up. So they really? would come in and they would bring us presents. Oh my god. Meaning animals. Yeah, I remember I had a in Florida we had a cat named Miko who was strictly outside because she was a Christmas present for me because I always wanted cats. And then she was under the tree and she was like a little kitten, right? And I was a little kitten myself. So I didn't understand that cats need their space. So I stuck my face right in front of the cat and she scratched my face. <gasps> and my mom was like, she's out. <laughs> she's out. <laughs> so, she, so we kept the cat, but the cat had to stay outside because uh, because I didn't understand See, personal space. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, I guess kids, how old were you? Um, I think I was probably like six or seven. I don't think I understood personal space that well then. No, either. not at all. Yeah. Uh-uh. I was still learning how to tie my shoe at that point. So <laughs> I had the Velcro for the longest time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. That was a little. Yeah. I, I remember that a little bit because it's like I remember like the anxiety of like. I remember how to do this. Can I do it right? Like mm-hmm. in school, like people are looking at me. I'm taking too long and nobody's looking at you. you know? I know, like... but you just feel that. Uh, I still can't do, I can only do bunny ears. I don't understand that. Like where you make the loop and go around like the adult way to tie a shoe. I don't know how to do that still. That's I okay. just do bunny ears. Bunny ears works. Okay. Why not? Then how come everyone makes fun of me when they see me tie my shoe? If they're looking at you tie your shoe, like, <laughs> do they really have a life? Like, <laughs> No, they don't. They don't. I, I hang around a lot of losers, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, your hair looks great, by the way. Thank you. I just got it touched up. So you so highlight? Icy. Yeah, I do a full, full highlight with my girl Tara. Nice. Yes. Yeah. The queen of blondes. That's what she is. 
thing is, I, I'm too dark to really go blonde, I feel like. Really? I'm so afraid, like, because I like my hair color. Yeah, yeah, But I'm afraid of, like, losing it if I go to, because I have to do, like, certain levels of, like, bleaching to get to, like, light enough for that. Oh, yeah, you really and have my, to strip your hair. And my eyebrows are so dark that I don't think it would look, like, great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. I mean, you can always get a wig and try it out. Oh, Let's I have. See. I have yeah, blonde wigs. Yeah, you tried it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've got blonde wigs. Let's, I've okay. got my costume wigs. All right. Okay. Having fun 24-7 just isn't for everybody. <laughs> so it's fine. Mm. Where are you from originally? I'm from Orlando, Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my family, uh, my parents uh, spend part of the year in Cape Canaveral. Mm. Oh, nice. Do you see a space shuttle go Yes, on? once yeah. in a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I usually only go back when they're back in Louisville because I've got nieces and nephews I want to see and all that. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. That was always a big thing growing up. Whenever there was like a space launch, we'd all go outside the school to see it. Like going up. Oh, cool. Yeah, obviously from Maitland, Florida, you can't see the thing, but you can see like the trail as it, it goes higher up. You and know. did you grow up going to like Disney and stuff all the time? Or No, actually, I was the youngest of three kids. So by the time I was born, my parents were like, no more Disney. We're sick of Disney. None of that. And then it wasn't until I was like in elementary school, like... And probably the same time when my cat scratched my face that my parents took me to Disney because uh, everybody was like, she hasn't been to Disney yet? What are you doing? You're bad parents. Yeah. So then they're like, fine, we'll go to Disney. Uh, I used to work, though, at Disney World. What? You worked at Disney World? I did. Who were you? I, who was I? Sorry, I'm not going to be like <laughs> one never, of the princesses. Or... I wish. I auditioned. It is so, the competition is so stiff in really? Orlando. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, I, I was a theater major at uh, Valencia Community College in Orlando, and everybody's dream at the theater department was like, I'm going to get really good at acting so I can audition for Disney. Like that, that was, was like the thing. That was like peak of what you can accomplish. I feel like I feel like the bar in Florida is just like like lower. I mean, you've seen the headlines coming out of Florida. Yeah. Apparently just... there's like the most lead in the pipes. There's like there's like a study Oh, that came that's out. why? That's why. That's why everything everyone's crazy in Florida because there's they're <laughs> drinking lead water yes. and they're just literally going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I mean, God. look at Ron DeSantis and his go-go boots. What oh my kind God. of insane man would wear those? And also like him going after like Disney, which is the biggest employer of the state, like what Yeah, that? right. Gosh, it's just his political stunt. I'm glad though because like he's not ever gonna run. He he won't have a chance at yeah, like, getting yeah. it. So like I feel fine about that. Yeah, but it, sorry. Anyway, I was a Kilimanjaro safari driver at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The Animal Kingdom. Mm. I was actually the youngest safari driver ever to. Well, I don't know if ever, but when I worked there, mm-hmm. I was because you had to be 18, and I started on my 18th birthday. Oh wow! So yeah. like we really trust this girl to drive. <laughs> yeah, apparently, because um, they're actual. Their actual trucks, like they would run on propane. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can drive like a. Do you have to get a special license to be able to drive like a? Big no, vehicle? no. no. <laughs> yeah, it's so it was so weird because it's like a twenty foot truck and you're driving it through animals basically. Like animals can just walk on the road and they would only go up to like ten miles per hour. Or so. But they let an eighteen year old drive that. Yeah, they would let um, people that come over from Europe who don't have driver's license. They would basically teach them how to drive these. Trucks trucks and I don't know if I'm whatever they can sue me later but <laughs> I don't think Disney, giving all the insiders I don't think good. Disney like fact checks this podcast it's yeah fine. Right. that'd be amazing if you had some Walt Disney himself frozen underneath the Epcot ball that's all he watches is sleeping with Sarah <laughs> be very strange uh yeah. yeah oh so so when you when you work at Animal Kingdom, does that mean you get a, a thing that'll get you into all of the parks? Yes. Yes. Yeah, a yeah. Pass. And then we'd get like, um, yeah, we had like a little card too that could get us into Euro Disney and Tokyo Disney and all of those. Oh, fun. But only like four times a year. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, if I was going to Orlando, I could just bring like, I think up to four people or five people. Nice. And just get them in the park for free. Oh, fun. Mm-hmm. That's always a good like perk to do. I know. I still haven't been to Disneyland out here, though. Oh, really? I've lived here for over 10 years and I've never been to Disneyland. <sighs> 
And it's so funny because I tell some of my friends who always go, I'll tell them, oh, I've never been to Disneyland. They're like, we should go. And then they don't bring me. And then later that same weekend, I'll see them posting on their Instagram that they went to Disneyland. With, and I'm just like, you guys are so passive aggressive. I don't understand. I think a lot of people out here will have a pass mm -hmm. and like they'll like be friends with people that are also like they'll, they'll go with people that also have passes. Like they don't expect anyone to just pay for a day because yeah, it's so expensive, yeah. I think. But well, one of my friends works for ABC. And so she's the one I can get you in. And then literally that weekend, I'll be like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, girl. Mm -hmm. I hope that churro tasted great. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. When did you move over here? I moved out here. I went to school at USC, so that's what originally brought me out. Um, I think Still it was, acting? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Theater. Um, it was like around 2012. Okay. Yeah. So you've been here like 10 years. Yeah. Like a minute. Yeah, I've been 11. here a minute and I still haven't made it. <laughs> it takes a while. Not famous yet. It yeah. takes a while. <laughs> Well, some of your roasts have done pretty well. They have been. Yeah, they've been doing good. I have another one against Nate Welsh. Oh, he's a good one. That's a, yeah. That'll be a good one. Yeah, yeah, he's really good with wordplay. Yeah. Yeah, he loves puns, so that I'm excited to, to see what he has in store for me. Nobody's called me Helen Cunt yet. <laughs> and that's like everyone's always said I look like Helen Hunt and I feel like I don't know if I'm allowed to say that you can bleep it yeah, out yeah yeah but <laughs> fine. yeah no one's called me Helen Cunt so you've heard it first it's my joke if Nate pulls that out of his ass it came from me he's a joke thief <laughs> uh, but yeah so you, when did you make the switch from acting to comedy uh out of college, because like uh, I was, I did playwriting too mm -hmm. when I was there. So I wrote plays while I was going to school, and they like got them produced with brand new theater. It's like a student oh, nice. led club, yeah, where it's all student written plays, student produced, acted, all that. Um, and I really enjoyed writing. I loved writing. I always wrote comedy, mm -hmm. comedic plays. And so then after college, I wanted to make sketches and things like that with my friends, but a lot of them are just flaky or they'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to be in it. I don't want to hold the boom. And I was like, all right, well, we can't all be in it, you know? And uh, yeah, and then uh, I just got into doing stand up. I took a pretty funny women class. Okay. Yeah, with Lisa Sunstead. I was doing audience work like filling the seats for like Ricky Lake and oh, things, yeah. shows like that. Yeah. And she was the warm up girl for this talk show. Um, and she, then she like pitched her uh, stand up comedy class for women. Mm. And I was like, that sounds interesting. I'll do that. So I took it and she was just like, yeah, this is how you do it. You write jokes and go to open mics. I was like, wow, that was yeah, that was a waste of three hundred dollars. <laughs> but it got me, it got me going, and it did like force me to write jokes every week to bring them to class and stuff. Yeah. And we did like a little showcase at the, at the comedy store on the main stage. Oh, oh wow, that's nice. Yeah, so that was really cool, and yeah, I just really fell in love with comedy because you can write, you can, you know, you, you can basically find stage time like anywhere. In mm -hmm. the city, or on create any day. it if you need to. Exactly, or create your own your own show for it. And yeah, I just I I love it. Yeah, I, I can't imagine life without it. As no. corny as that sounds. Same. I was also a theater major and kind of similar. I was doing improv and sketch in mm -hmm. Chicago, and then just was tired of having to coordinate with eight people's schedules, and just went to an open mic and mm -hmm. thought I wouldn't like it, and I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And also, oh, I meant to ask you earlier about the, after the cuddling, what side of the bed do you sleep on? Do you sleep closest to the door or closest to, or do you just sprawl? So I sleep, okay. Uh, I hope this is more charming than sad. Um, I sleep, I sleep on this side of the bed, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is like a perfect position for me. I feel right at home. And then, um, you know, it's like it's like this size, too. And instead of having like another stack of pillows, I put the cat bed. On the bed. On the bed where the, the pillow, the other pillow should be. Mm -hmm. And so my cats sleep there. Where <laughs> The two of them, they'll curl up on the bed and sleep there next to me. 
And so uh, I think it's adorable because that way they don't get their cat hair everywhere. They know to just stay there, which I love. Mm-hmm. I've trained them to do that. But then if I bring a guy home, I have to mm-hmm. quickly like excuse myself and go back to my bedroom and like throw it on the throw it on the floor and then like move a pillow over so it doesn't look like I'm a lonely cat woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be like, hey, give me like ten seconds. Yeah, I'll be yeah. Right back. I'll just be like, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna freshen up, and really, I'm just like, ah, hide the dirty clothes, hide everything. Yeah, I yeah. always usually sleep at the. I think maybe because of my commitment issues, I like like to have the bed part of the bed that's closest to the door. Okay, um, but that's usually that's honestly. I thought that I usually would sleep that way, but then I I dated this one guy. And um, I always thought that I was sleeping closest to the door. But then we went to visit his grandmother in San Diego and we spent the night there. And I tried to get the spot closest to the door. And he's like, no, I always sleep closest to the door. And I was like, do you? Like, I feel like I've always slept. And so, but I like, you know, I gave in to him. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, maybe... I don't know. Maybe he was just gaslighting me so he could get <laughs> the get good, the, the good, the spot. good side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was away from the window, so the sun didn't wake him up in the morning. I don't. So. I don't mind the sun waking me up in the morning. It's kind of really? nice. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if I need to be in the right headspace, if I if I have stuff to do, then I don't mind like the sunlight. Yeah. Because I think that's a better way to wake up than just like an alarm blaring like in your face. But if I want to sleep in, then the sun is just annoying as hell. Yeah. See, I, I'm just the alarm person. I have, like, five alarms set. I had to, like, just snooze, snooze, snooze. <laughs> yeah, my cats are my alarm now. They wake up at, like, five in the morning. And uh, my one cat, Pierogi, is such a little demon. He'll literally take his paw and just bat my face. And I know his paws are filthy, so I'm like, don't touch me with those nasty things. So, yeah, so I have to wake up. And then with the time uh, change, I've been waking up at 4 a.m. because they're not, they don't understand daylight savings. They don't know what that is. So they just kind of jump on you. You're supposed to be up now. What's going on? Basically, or they'll just run around my room until like one of them just like climbs on my face, just like running and stuff. They like sitting on faces, don't they? They do. They're perverts. They love (laughs) sitting on faces, showing you their butts in the morning first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cats, man. <laughs> you know, right? Cats are gonna cat. <laughs> uh, so you were telling me that you do certain like nighttime routines. I do. So I I'm really into skincare. I don't know if you could tell from the, yeah, the yeah. pillow. <laughs> well, and also the good skin you have. You have thank great you, skin. Thank you. Um, yeah, and also I had skin cancer like oh, years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, I have this little scar. I mean, no people are like, "Oh, I had I couldn't tell, but I see it every single day. I have like a little scar from it on the side of my nose." And um and so they basically were like, "Well, you're very white and you have light eyes and light hair, so it's only a matter of time before you get it again." So like sunscreen and stuff. So that's why I'm like very sunscreen and also it's good for anti-aging. Um, so what I'll do is like I'll cleanse my face and then put like a sheet mask on mm-hmm. and then I'll take that off and then I'll use this like light therapy. LED like one mask. of those big masks things. Yes. yes. I brought it with me. Should, is this a good time to yeah, bust you wanna, it you out? Show it? Yeah. Yes. Cause I'm, I'm always curious about this kind of stuff. Cause like I have not been doing, I've just been relying on jeans lately and like oh, moisturizer. Geez. And I'm like, I maybe should start doing some of this stuff. Cause this is how people yeah. stay young. Like this is why Jennifer Aniston looked the way she does in her face. Right. I always love the opening for mommy dearest where you see her like, with the hot water and then she takes an ice cube and like puts it on her face. I don't oh, know. Oh, is that supposed to help that. too? Apparently like uh, if you like extreme heat and then extreme cold, it's supposed to expand and then tighten your pores. I don't know. Joan Crawford did it and she's crazy. So yeah. But so here it is. This is my light therapy mask. You mm-hmm. can see all the lights on the inside. Oh geez. I usually, I wipe it down. So if that's, that's probably dirt from my bag, but if I will put it like this, well, like, I usually tie my hair back so it gets all, all to my face. And you just turn on a light? Turn it on. Look at that. And that's supposed to just keep your skin looking young? Yeah, so the light, it's supposed to, like, penetrate deep into your, your skin. Um, and, yeah, I, apparently 
Because I did do my research. Because I was like, if I'm going to buy this thing and look like a fucking psycho for yeah. 20 minutes. Psycho at a rave. Yeah, right. Exactly. With my glow sticks and stuff raving. Um, I'm going to make sure it's good. And it apparently, yeah, there's been studies where it shows. But you have to do it consistently. Okay. Yeah. So it's and at least uh, 20 minutes a day. Yeah, see, these are the tricks so, I need to know because I feel like there's all these, like, secret things that, like, celebrities and people do so that they continue to look young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I got into this because my sister got a free one. She's a journalist. Mm. And so she got, like, a wand, though, with the red light. And she, like, uses it on her face, but um, it was really expensive, too. Like, I tried buying my own. And I was like, no. And then I, when I did more research, they said, like, the light one, it's good, but you need one that is FDA approved because so mm. many people just like, oh, look at this, buy it. You and know? and the, the, it's like something made in China or whatever. Yeah, like and it's literally just lights and you're not doing anything, you know, um, for it. But, uh, yeah, so that's when I looked into that, and then I just looked at the full, because they're like, you have to do it at least 20 minutes. Um, and, like, take a stick and, like, do it that way just sounds, like, annoying. Yeah, yeah, the fact that, because, like, she doesn't do it for 20 minutes either. She'll just, like, go over certain spots or whatever, and then she's like, okay, I'm done. Mm. But I'm like, mm, are you? I don't know. If they do it at, like, um, facial clinics, too, or, like, spas, they'll have like therapy or whatever light therapy that they'll do um so this obviously this isn't like medical grade but yeah it does the the job i i have something that i use a little bit i use this in the mornings and this is supposed to be like a stretchy thing oh yeah to like smooth it it's just it's also funny looking because it's like it's like two balls. And yeah, it's like it is. Rubbing like two balls on Do your they face. Vibrate? Does it no, vibrate? it doesn't. Okay. You can you can try it if you want. It's just like it's so it funny. Doesn't have a button or anything. It just like uses the okay, thing. Okay, because just... I I thought this was like a. No, it doesn't. Okay, so no, no, it would double as a vibrator if that, that were the case. I guess. <laughs> oh God, Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Oh God. my gosh. No, but but you see, it's like supposed to stretch and like yeah, for, like drain the the lymph. Or like lymphotic. I guess you're supposed to like you know like. Thing heighten your blood in there like get it pumping more or yeah. something i don't know exactly what you're supposed to do i'm just kind of like throwing like stuff at the wall and seeing what <laughs> sticks and seeing like oh what's working for anti-aging yeah um guys probably don't know any of this stuff like i don't think they do any of this I no like they barely moisturize i <laughs> yeah, no, they use like that like 20 in one cleanser like whatever they wash their balls with they're putting that stuff on their face too and they're happy and like, like what they... it's the same no big deal it's I know. like it's not the same <laughs> i know it's so annoying it's it really is like my brother growing up he would just have like a bar of dial soap that he would just use on everything and his skin was like flawless it still is and he chews tobacco and he still like looks amazing not his teeth so much <laughs> <laughs> but everything else, he looks great. And yet my mom was, like, telling my sister and I when we were, like, becoming, like, you know, once as soon as we got our period, she's like, you got your period, you're women now, so here's oil of a Put it on. Just slather it on every single night. You're going to thank me when you're 40. So. Oh, that's good. Start when you're young. It's called anti-aging, not reverse aging. Although some people try to do that. There's that billionaire that's like trying to like look like he's like 21 again. Oh, yeah. He like, he like infused his... He took his 17-year-old kid's like blood to try to like infuse... I don't... I think that's just like getting dangerous there. That that's just gross. I feel like that's like human farming almost. Like I had you for spare body parts. That's like that movie with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson, The Island. I never saw that. No, it's basically they're just clones of rich people and they get like um there's like a lottery and they're like, "Oh my god, this person got they're being sent to the island. It's paradise. And it, it, later you find out, it's like, oh, no, this guy just needed, like, a new kidney. And so now that guy's oh, going to die to harvest and stuff. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. That shit's dark. Mm -hmm. Rich people, man. Yeah. I mean, they have the most incentive to stay alive as long as they can. Their life's great. They're I like, know. why would I want eternal salvation? Yeah, I'm why, good why here. Why would I want to die and have my money go to charity? Exactly, you know? right? Uh, <laughs> It's so... <laughs> or my kids that I'm just using as a kidney farm. Why would I want them to have fun? I don't know. But if you... 
if you could do a thing and like it would stop aging, if you could take like a pill and it would stop aging, would you? Would Absolutely. You do it, and would you do it like right this second or would you wait a couple years? No, right this second. Yeah. Right this second. If a study came out that if you took, if you ate one cat and <laughs> it would prevent aging, trust Maverick's going, pierogi I like, oh, Maverick. Wow. Gonna... <laughs> you would eat, wait, I didn't I'd even eat one that, of my babies. Wait, wait, I didn't even pose that question. Like, <laughs> I know the weird thing I would do. I love my cats, I'm but I would saying, eat one of them. I'm just saying, science, get on that. If, if you can find a way to reverse aging from eating, eating a cat. a cat? cat? I'm just, there's one that needs to go. I feel like... I love both of them, but, you know, one's a password, one's not, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I love that that's the way you determine which cat you love more. One is a password and one is not. Oh, yeah. No, when I was getting the little one Maverick, when I was getting him, like, neutered and stuff, that's usually when they put, like, the chip in. Mm -hmm. So, like, so that way if he runs away, so, like, oh, do you want to put a chip in, in Maverick? I was like... No, I don't think we need that. Just the neutering thing. <laughs> you just brought him as a companion for your other cat? Basically. And then he was like a lot of trouble. But he's just, he knows he's trouble because he's such a sweetheart. He'll mm. like cuddle with you and you're like, my you're like, heart. oh, you're being I like can't... a dog cat right now. I know. You're like, I can't stay mad at you. But then like you hear him knocking stuff off my end, just like pooping where he shouldn't. And then it's, you get angry with him. But he's like, me? But yeah, so he's he's adorable. I'd never want to, you know, bring any harm to him. But if he were to reverse my aging, <laughs> that's an exception. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, aging is a fear, I think, too. It's like you see, like, but people that are older now look so much younger, and it's kind of weird. Like, if you watch the 90s and what they thought, like, 40 and 50-year-olds oh, looked yeah. like, and I was like... They look, like, so much older. Well, also, because, like, a lot of people were smoking and, oh, you know. yeah. And then also, like, uh, the sunscreen wasn't a big thing. Like, my dad told me, like, his mom would just, like, oil him up with baby oil so his skin could, like, fry like bacon in the sun. That was their, oh my their God. way of, like, protecting against the sun and stuff. And then, uh, honestly, alcohol, too, is a big yeah. Like, yeah, so I've actually stopped drinking. I don't really so. drink much very mm-hmm. often. I, I'm i not, you know, like, I'm somebody who, like, I might drink, like, once every two weeks, mm-hmm. but, like, it's just not a thing for me. I smoke weed more, so yeah. I'm just more of that, you know. That's good. But um, not completely sober. I will have a drink occasionally, but yeah. I usually do a hangover drink with it. <laughs> right. A little that. hair of the dog. But um, another thing, too, though, is... Uh, you know, people are trying to stay younger. So they get the filler and like the Botox and stuff. And then the filler, what it does is it gives you a specific look. Like everyone's kind of looking like Instagram models. They all look the same, just different hair colors basically. Um. And then because of that, I feel we're now conditioned that when we see that filler face, we just automatically assume that they're older. So, mm. you know, because it's like, oh, that's what 40-year-olds get. So I've seen women that are younger than me look way older because they've got the duck lips and, like, the mm. over-plumped face, yeah. you know? So it just makes you, like, you just associate it with, like, oh, they're trying to look young, you know? Mm. I've noticed, like, uh, with plastic surgery, like, Julie Andrews did it perfectly. She oh, yeah? looks amazing. She's like, oh, it's just jeans. I'm like, bullshit. Bullshit. They're yeah. all lying. They all lie all about the work that they get done. Right, J Lo saying, "Oh, it's olive oil." Oh, give me a oh, break! Bullshit! Yeah. Come on, everyone has some work done. They just keep it really quiet. Yeah, and I yeah. bet COVID was like the perfect time for so many of them to right, do stuff. Right, to do stuff. They're like, "Who can come to my house?" Yeah, but they. I've always been told like never, never go to a plastic surgeon if he's like, "I'm gonna make you look ten years younger." It's like, don't go to that guy. He's going to botch you or whatever. Or woman, because doctors can be both. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it oh, makes yeah. me nervous. The idea of like going to like, yeah, get something done. That, just yeah. Like, I, I can't. Uh, I'd be so scared of doing anything to my face that's like permanent. You yeah, know? I like, know. Because even fillers, at least you can, like Courtney Cox, when she went too much, then she got the dissolve, dissolved it. And she looks so much better now. Yeah. Um, 
But and yeah, some, some of those expire. I learned recently that I guess breast implants expire every ten years. You'd get them redone. Yeah, that's what my friend said. She's had um, she's had her boobs done, and she's like, no, like when my ten years is up, I'm just gonna take them out. Damn. And so I was like, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like that stuff is. Ugh, I I don't like I don't like a. Uh, you know, body like horror, like like cutting into like I can't watch surgery stuff. I'm yeah, like thinking yeah. about it, just like I just, ew. I, <laughs> I mean, I guess if I had to, like for like if I'm gonna die, of course, yes, I'll do the surgery or mm-hmm. whatever. But I just don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's. Ugh. I'm just so scared of like waking up and oh, they went too far, or it's just some uh, some complication happened. And Have you ever woken up with that dream? It's like, oh, my face is not here. Like, I've woken up where I didn't have a nose. <laughs> no, like, my God, no. Things like that. Like, yeah. I've had uh, dreams about getting tattoos, and that freaks me out. Oh, yeah? Like, what tattoo did you wake up with? Well, just stupid crap, like... Like your ex's name on your forehead? <laughs> yeah, awful things like face tattoos or, like, just something really stupid, you know? And then I'm waking up like, oh, my God, did I get the duck hunt things? Like, guns on my chest? And it's like, okay, good. It was just a dream. Thank God. Duck hunt guns might not be bad depending on where you place them. I'm just saying, I some guy told me that uh, he met a girl and she had the two duck hunt... T- like guns like pointing to her tits like right oh here and he was like girl that shit's forever like come on I don't know I've just I've seen so many tattoos where maybe the person's happy with it but I've regretted it for them to where I'm yes. like I'm good I'm good absolutely like I thought about like there's this one service that lets you do like two week tattoos and it I've looks really those, realistic. Yeah. It's like that's something I might try because but the thing is I changed my mind about so much. Like I can barely pick out what I want to wear every day. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I don't know if I could be committed to like having something in my body the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's just a lot. It is a lot and yeah, I know I'd probably be like really into it for the first year Mm -hmm. and then if I had to I mean I guess at that point if you just see it you kind of get used to it it's part of your body yeah yeah. and I appreciate I like some other people I know that have really great sleeves and it's great that their body is art but like you know I don't know if I want that for mine you know I might have something like super small no definitely it's I was thinking about uh, getting a very minimalistic tattoo of an alligator above my ankle. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm from Florida. Yeah. And then I wanted it smoking a cigarette. I don't know. I thought that'd be really cute. And so my friend actually drew a bunch of mock-up like things. Yeah. And I was really considering it, but I was like, no, I don't think you, I. You can could do try that, that two-week service or whatever. I was thinking that mm-hmm. too. It's uh, is it the femoral tattoo? I forget what it, no, I forget what it's called. But the second we like, now that we mentioned it, we're both gonna get ads on it on our phone because they li- listen to everything. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> like I, I, some people think. That they're not listening. Of course they're listening. That is what's happening. That's why we get ads for things right after we talk about them. Did you see that? There was a video somebody posted. This was years ago on Reddit where it was like a married couple. They don't have a cat and they just had their phone out and they were just like, oh, don't forget to get cat food. Yeah, we need cat food. Be sure to get the cat food. Phone wasn't on or any, or it was on, but it wasn't like, list, like yeah. the mic wasn't on. And then literally, like, the next day, they started getting ads for cat food, like, Mm -hmm. on Facebook, on Instagram, and all that, like, yeah. And they're like, it's listening. It's always there. It's always listening. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see what the ads are, like, telling you or not telling you. (laughs) Like, I've been with my partner for, like, uh, two and a half years, and now I'm not that we are not at this stage yet, but, like, I'm starting to get, like, ads for jewelry and, like, rings, and I'm like, okay, like, you know, not interested right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's not in, you know, I'm not somebody who's like dreaming of that. You know, mm-hmm. it's not, he's amazing. I love him. Still doing my commitment issues, as I said. <laughs> you know, uh, that is a long commitment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's why I'm always careful what I Google too. Cause like my friend, um, we were talk. we were just like hanging out one day and I was talking about like fertility for some reason. And she's like, you can do fertility tests, whatever. I was like, no, I'm not that interested. And then she's like, no, I think like, uh, you can do like a mouth swab. And so she Googled that. And then she told me that after she Googled it, she's been getting so many fertility and like baby stuff, like ads popping up because of it. Yeah. But I'm clear. <laughs> I don't get that. 
Yeah, you got. I mean, the thing is, I'll Google so many things for research for like writing, even like writing a joke or writing a, you know, writing a script. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll have to research certain things. So my Google history is all over the place. Like I'll like Google like how do you stash this kind of drugs or like what kind of like it's 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 interesting because as a writer you'll just Google so many different things. Yeah, right. <laughs> how to do black tar heroin, and then suddenly you get ads on Amazon for spoons. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to support your... Spoons and belts. Hey, they don't support it, but, the, you know, you're going to buy it anyway. Might as well, you know, make a sale from you. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, we're all consumer-driven, all that. Yeah. Brian Simpson had a great joke about um, trying to find the best way to kill yourself. <laughs> and one was about getting, like, an older car, no hybrids, and uh, just letting it run. And then... Um, you know, being in a garage and just because a hybrid wouldn't work. Yeah, the the, oh, wait, the that's, exhaust. So that's is too funny clean. because that could be a funny scene in a movie where someone tries to kill themselves, but like they do it and they do it wrong because With it's the a hybrid, hybrid yeah, yeah. and they literally can't. <laughs> like I think that would be like I immediately think of like that's a hilarious scene. Like why do, why is yeah. there a scene where somebody has a a, a suicide fail? And then they continue on their day, and then, then the show, the yep. film kind of starts. <laughs> <laughs> and their day gets better. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Brian for that inspiration. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and he was saying that uh, after he Googled that, then he started noticing uh, ads for used cars that were, like, of the, the, the perfect cars to use to kill yourself with. And he's like, oh, hell no, they're not going to profit on the back end of my, my death. So yeah. I thought that was great. <laughs> that is fun man yeah yeah suicide is funny <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious no. hilarious that's what i like though is that we can find ways to make super dark things funny or mm-hmm. if we're having like a really bad time we can go on stage and at least do a crazy rant about it well you have to that's what comedy is comedy's uh tragedy plus time yeah and that's such a human thing to do is to find the light in the dark you know did you always, like, were you always making jokes growing up, or was that not till later? Oh, no, I was always making jokes. That's like, I was the baby of the family, mm-hmm. so I loved the attention. And that's the easiest way to get attention, is to just make people laugh. Either, like, acting like a fool, or, like, clever word plays, or being a smartass and being quick. Um, and then... Like, I've, I learned in the service industry, you're able to, like, give sass to customers without getting in trouble mm-hmm. if you're funny about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you can make them laugh, if you can lightly roast them, you know, mm-hmm. then they'll be like, ah, ha, ha, she's so funny. But really, you're like, fucking pig. <laughs> <laughs> so. Or, like, if you have an issue at work with people or even, like, in a relationship, it's like... It, you get better results from changing people's behavior if you do it in a lighthearted, comedic way than just being like, dude, pick up your trash. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. And I think that creates some change, too, because mm-hmm. like people laugh and they think about stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, laughter, it's disarming, too. Mm-hmm. And that's what I have. Um, my cousin's daughter-in-law, she's a psychiatrist, and she, she uh, shared with me, like... Um, some psychology article about humor and how like why a lot of men uh, think that women aren't funny and a lot of time it's because especially in a stand-up setting we're like all right make me laugh it's like you don't want to making somebody laugh it's like giving your it's it's a powerful feeling Mm -hmm. so when you laugh It's like you're giving power to the person who's making you laugh. Yeah. And a lot of men are uncomfortable with that. But they're totally fine with it when it's not a stand-up setting and you're Mm. just talking to a girl and she's making you laugh. That's different. Yeah. And, oh, you're supposed to be But but I think it's also, like, going into a comedy show with the mentality of, oh, like, make me laugh. Like, they're going to go, they're going to cross their arms. They're going to, like, hold back a little bit. Of course, yeah. Versus if they're just kind of relaxed and like, oh, let's go see this comedy show. Oh, okay. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think it's it's a lot of that, too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see it all the time online, too. I mean, that's what I love. Like, when you do Roast Battle, they post jokes. And I could just be completely dominating. I could have won the battle and everything. And there's always, like, at least one or two guys, like, she was trash. The guy was so much better. It's like, really, dude? dude? Yeah. All he did was call me Big Bird. Like, that's... 
Yeah. Everyone calls me that. Because so you're like, tall. Yeah, tall, and I guess like I got a big nose. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I think you're fine. I think I'm fine, too. But, you know, I, I blame all the audiences for laughing at that shit. It's like... <laughs> a little roast. You're kind of you're kinda there knowing yeah. they're going to find something. No, I mean, you're turned into a caricature, for sure. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, men suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, not dating right now? I'm dating... Oh, God. I'm trying not to, but I, I'm also trying to. <laughs> I'm on Bumble. And, like, with Bumble, you know, the girl's supposed to message first. Uh, which is also, like, weird, but, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing a thing where I try to guess their birthdays, mm -hmm. where I'll just say a date, like, January 18th. And then they'll see that and they'll be like, uh, what is that? I don't know. I'd be like, your birthday? And then they'll either say, yeah, or sometimes they'll play along. And then sometimes guys are like, yep, you got it. Or no. And then nothing. So I'm like, cool. Why'd you swipe on me? Like, yeah. what the hell? No, I feel like a lot of guys will just like swipe on ev like a, a lot of people and then not and then filter out after. But it's just like, why? What's the po I don't I don't get it. Whatever. Uh, the online dating thing, like, I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed meeting people in person, mm -hmm. but it's so hard to do that now. It is. I mean, I've met a few people in person, um, and uh, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. <laughs> I hope they don't see this podcast. Um, oh, here's, a, here's an interesting question. So somebody on Bumble is an ex-boyfriend of a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't talked to her though in over five years. How long ago did they date? They broke up a year ago. Were they like engaged or They serious? were never engaged, but they were very serious. Did they live together? I have no idea because I never really talked to them and I never thought to ask. So she's what, somebody who disappeared when she got into that relationship, kind of stopped talking to people. No, I was never. Okay. She was a friend from college. Mm -hmm. And so we were kind of like, We'd, we'd see each other at functions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know. I think my sister said that that's, a, that's fine to go on. Yeah, I think it's been enough time. Doing... And you're in a big city. It's not like you're in a small town where you're definitely going to run into this person. Yeah, especially because like, I haven't seen her. And like, it's like, you haven't seen her. Like, has she ever been to a comedy show of yours? She did in the beginning. Okay. But that's also because he was a producer of the comedy show. Oh. But this was, like, years ago, and yeah. nothing was going on that there was, abs like, no, I was Is he I still in comedy? No, he never did comedy. Okay. That's That's, like, something that's, like, oh, that's a green flag for me. You've never tried to be yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. I like you. Yeah, yeah, because then I can be center of attention first off, and you can... The, yeah, that, and I feel like every guy I've dated who thinks they're funny, then they try to write jokes for me, or they, they're, like, you should say the joke this way, or they'll, like, see me do comedy a few times. They're like, I could do that. Hey, I want to go to an open mic. And it's like, no, Don't. Please. Don't. Just stop. <laughs> There's already too many men that think they're funny. It's like, stop it. Yeah. Um, no, I think um, that's... I think you're totally fine. I think it's been enough time. Yeah. You don't talk to the person anymore. She's not really in your life. So, like, risking her being out of your life doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, that's not right? Yeah, I think you're fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. that's, that's a really long I just, time. Yeah, He's I just never know etiquette about that. Cause it's still like, oh, that's no, so-and-so's ex. I don't no, know if it was a case where it's like, you know, they were engaged and then she had to break up the wedding like a week before and there was this big dramatic thing, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe, you know, okay. maybe, maybe not just because of also the red flags of that. Yeah, uh, that's true. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Sorry, this always makes me think of like, am I the asshole and stuff? Like, which I totally, oh, yeah. I totally check out that stuff on Reddit and uh -huh. all that, like a guilty pleasure. They're trip. making a TV show on that. Does not surprise me. Yeah, Gosh. because so many people, and so many people, like sometimes they'll do it in like the judgment. I'm just like, well, that you know, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, and you game too, right? You play video games. I do. I yeah. play a lot of horror games. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't think I would like horror games, but it's actually, they're really fun. The story's really good, too, because especially with horror, it's like a lot of the times the, the story's told through gameplay mm. and visuals. Nice. Which I like because so many, like, Final Fantasy and stuff, it's all, like, cutscenes and dialogue, yeah. and it's like, 
What, am I watching a movie or playing a game? Yeah. You know? That's why I like just playing, like, the cartoon stuff. Like, you know, yeah. like Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, Pikmin, like, that <laughs> kind of shit. You know, the, like, easy games that I can pick up and put down and not have to, like, play, like, all weekend or anything. Yeah, yeah, those are great. Oh, I love uh, Zelda. I haven't gotten the new one because I just don't have time. It's, like, one of those I feel like I want to pick it up and, like, want to play for, like, a long time. It's, mm-hmm. like, I have a lot of stuff I'm trying to do and I don't have time. Yeah. No, there's just so, yeah, it's amazing, but there is so much to do. Yeah. Uh, like, some one of my friends, he asked me, like, how far in the game I am. And I'm, like, I have no idea. I don't even know what the landmarks I just are. Made, I just made soup. That's all I did. <laughs> Because I did I, play Breath of the Wild, but the only reason is because of the pandemic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah. But anyways, so we are starting to wind down the podcast, and mm-hmm. I always ask people um, what your dreams are for the future. My dreams for the future. Oh, boy. Still doing stand-up and comedy. Um, oh, boy. Like realistic dreams? or like, No, you can take that however you want. You, you can oh my use gosh. it to manifest your... I want to win the lotto, please. <laughs> at least enough to pay off the car I just bought. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, I'd love to have my own show one day too. My yeah. own little sitcom that I wrote myself. So awesome! That's I'd like great to goal. do that. Yeah, and maybe maybe um, get rid of one of my cats. I'll eat that cat for eternal youth. There's a. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dream for the future. Just let me get rid of the naughty cat to get rid of some crow's feet. <laughs> I think that's a fair trade. That's alchemy, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, and let people know where they can find you. You can find me at the Big Golgowski on Instagram and Twitter, or X, formerly known as Twitter, or whatever. I'm also on Threads. I love Threads. I fuck with Threads. Um, and I'm Eliski on TikTok. And Venmo, you can find me at Elise hyphen Kulkowski. <laughs> that's social media, apparently. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for doing the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having thanks. me. And we always end by oh. saying goodnight. Okay. So good night. Good night. Thanks for listening to Sleeping with Sarah, where I slept with Elise Kulkowski. You can follow Elise at Elise Ski. E-L-I-S-E-S-K-I on TikTok and the Big Golgowski on Instagram. That's the big and then G-O-L-G-O-W-S-K-I. If you like the podcast, please rate and review, share it with your friends. If you don't like it, share it with your enemies and follow Sleeping With Sarah on TikTok and Sleeping With Sarah Pod on Instagram and Threads. I want to give a big thank you to Patrick Sugar and Alex Garcia, my new producing partners, and Jam in the Van for letting us use the space. If you'd like to follow me, you can follow me at Sarah Albritton on Instagram and Twitter, and at Sarah Albritton Comedy on TikTok, or check out my website, sleepysarah.com. Until next time, good night. Sleeping with Sarah.